Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our F5E Tiger 2 and we're looking at the RWR. So we best do a brief bit of theory first. So the RWR is primarily a defensive system. It can also be used as minor uh, offense but primarily defense. And what it is, is we've got um, passive, it's a passive system only. We've got passive sensors around the peripheries of the aircraft, uh, usually in the nose, usually in the tail, sometimes on the, edge of the edges of the wings. And what it does is it is a detection zone in a ring around the aircraft forwards backwards right and left all overlapping each other that detect hostile and friendly radar emissions it then processes those emissions decides which is a threat and which is not and then displays them to the pilot on a screen in the cockpit the only thing to point out at this point that there are some limitations. It detects out to the side and up to uh, a d an angle of about uh, roughly about 45 degrees um, and roughly down at 45 degrees as well. But there are dead spots. It cannot detect above it and essentially 45 degrees up and like that. And it cannot detect below it 45 degrees down and 45 degrees uh, down like that. So that's something to bear in mind. Another thing to bear in mind is it cannot IFF, so it cannot determine which radar emissions are friendly, which are hostile, because it's a passive system only, therefore it can't sh handshake with the radar signals. So it will just display them all as essentially hostile. Primarily here for defensive to give you SA situational awareness. It's your best view of the battlefield all around you, where, the ho where hostile radars are, where your friends are, where ground targets are, where ship targets are, and stuff like that. So it keeps you alert of the condition of the battlefield. Now let's look at our instruments. Here is the display, the main display, um, and it works like a clock, 12 o'clock is in front, 6 o'clock behind, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and radar emissions will be displayed in the correct azimuth, so it's ahead, if it's ahead of us, it'll be up here. Uh, we'll go into that in a bit more uh, shortly. We've got a knob here that turns the brightness up and down of the RWR, and we've got the RWR controller here. Uh, it gives, the RWR gives audio and visual warnings, so we've got a audio knob we can turn the audio warnings up or down and we've got a dim knob here we can turn the brightness of these lights up and down so first we need to turn it on for this tutorial just to save time I've already got it turned on and you can see we've got the power and system lights on if it wasn't on from a cold start you would need to turn that on let it do its warm-up uh, you'll see several digits appear while it's warming up and then it'll go into this state that we've got here uh, where it's ready for use let's start at the top left here um, mode open uh, so we've got mode here and it can be either open, or if I click it again, priority. If it's on open, then it will display the maximum amount of targets, uh, sorry, the maximum amount of radar emissions that the RWR can cope with, which is 16. If you go to priority, it'll only put the uh, six most priority threats, uh, display the uh, six most priority threats to you and ignore the less priority, so you don't get overload. And I should explain that as these and I'll just explain that as the RWR receives the radar signals, it processes them and determines what priority threat there are, and it will display them in different priority threat modes, which we'll have a look at in a bit. The next is search. Now, unfortunately, with this type of RWR, you can either look for search and uh, search radars, or you can look for track radars. Uh, most R's, other RWRs you can interlace but, uh, so you can show track radars and search radars on the same screen. This you can only do one or the other. Now I've heard that in a real F5 um, this, this mode will actually switch between the two um, automatically so if a search radar suddenly gets a lock on you it will switch automatically. In the DCS version I certainly know that's not the case. You have to press the button here search like this to go on search mode and you can see we've actually got three um, emissions already and if uh, you feel like a hostile is tracking you then you'll turn search off but we'll go through that in a minute next is handoff this has no function next is launch uh, i believe this is for testing the launch uh, audio signal this has no function altitude um, this is used to separate high and low altitude um, uh, radar emissions this has no function in dcs next is t um, so if I were to press T, you can see if I hold it, I've got TGC, sorry, TGT set, target separate. So if we've got multiple targets and they're literally the signal, the signs of them are on top of each other, you press that and it will move them away from each other so they don't get too cluttered. Next we've got a system test, that is as it says, it takes about 10 seconds to test the system and report back if it's okay. Next is unknown. 
I don't see the point of this button, but it allows you to show or not show sh unknown ship radars. I don't really know why you would want that. Maybe if you were in a ship-rich environment where you knew the ships were of no uh, consequence to you, maybe that's why you would want to turn the ship uh, unknowns off. ACT power, uh, as far as I'm aware, has no function. Uh, right, so let's get using it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're checking. We've got search off at the moment, so we're currently looking for track radars. I should quickly explain. You get essentially two types of radar signal, a search radar and a track radar. A search radar is a hostile that's searching the skies generally and it is seeing us uh, but not locking us. Uh, the, the brevity termination for this is it's nailing us. We are getting nails nailed by that radar. Uh, at that point it's no threat, it's just scanning. The second mode a, a radar could be in is track. That's tracking you and that is considered lethal because once a radar is tracking you it can then fire its missiles at you or guns at you or whatever type of radar it is. This is known as being spiked. I'm being spiked at that point by the radar. So at the moment we've got search off and we can see that we've got no track radars to worry about. So we're going to put search on and see what we can see. Uh, immediately we've got three radars. Now remember we don't know whether these are hostile or friendly. Um, to determine whether they are hostile or friendly you'll have to basically talk through the comms to your friends and see if, if that's them. Or talk to the AWACS or whatever you've got. We've got a U. U stands for unknown. Usually that's a ship because almost all ship radars are unknown to the RWR. Um, so it's some type of offensive ship radar. We've also got a 2-9, so that is a MiG-29 or a MiG-29 variant or it could be an SU-27 as well. Uh, I believe the reason is the SU-27 has the same or a similar radar profile to the MiG-29, so it just assumes it's a MiG-29 in that case. And we've got a 06. A 06 is an SA-6 uh, cub launcher. So we've got a ship there, an SA-6 there, and a MiG-29 there. The next thing to point out is the range. Now, the closer, so we can see this guy is off to the 10 o'clock, this guy is to the 12 o'clock, this guy is to the 1 o'clock, as you can see. Now, we do get a very rough description of the range. However close this guy, this uh, icon, is to the center, that is not the geographical range, but is that is the signal, signal strength. It gives you a very rough indication of, of geometric range, but that is very rough. And we can see that the U is the closest, the SA6 is next closest, the MiG-29 is uh, furthest. Now, let's just double check that on our, on our F-10 map. On our F-10 map, um, that's actually wrong, uh, because the SA6 is actually closest, the ship is actually further away. And that shows how it's only a very rough uh, geographical uh, usage in terms of range. And the reason the U is closer is because that ship has a much more powerful radar than the SA-6 or that MiG-29. So that's why it's showing closer. You have to, uh, so when thinking about the range, you've also got to factor in the strength of that radar. Next, we'll talk about the priority. So you can see that the MiG-29 has got a diamond around it. That's because the RWR has selected that uh, radar source as the priority. It said that even though it's further away, essentially, it says the MiG-29 is the most dangerous. That's the thing to worry about. And these priorities are hard programmed in to the RWR system. What we're going to do is we're going to fly into these guys and we're going to wait until essentially one of them disappears. So we start off on search mode like this, looking for these search radars. So they're all searching for me at the moment but none of them are tracking me, and stop. So what we've seen is that the ship and the 29 are still there, but the SA-6 has disappeared. On an F-5, that's bad news. It almost certainly, it either means they've, they're they not scanning you anymore, which is good, or more likely, they are now tracking you, they're spiking you. So we're gonna turn off our search radar, and we can now see that we've got the SA-6 on track. It's tracking us, it's spiking us, so it's now lethal. We can see that it's got the diamond around it because it is now the priority threat, threat because, it's, because it is spiking us and it can fire a shot. We've also noted that it's now got a circle around it. That is telling us that it's got a lock on us. It's tracking us, okay? And you can see it's getting a lot closer as well because the signal strength is increasing because it's now a track radar. Right, so let's carry on and see what happens next. Okay. We've got a new player in town. Now the MiG-29 is also tracking us. It's got the circle around it. And it's considered the highest priority threat because uh, uh, MiG-29 is a higher priority threat than the SA-6 in this uh, radar's opinion, radar warning uh, opinion. Uh, so we've got two guys tracking us. Someone's about to fire at us, okay? Um, now the only other thing is they're on top of each other. They're hard to read. So I'm gonna try using the target separate to see if I can separate them. 
And you can see I hold my finger on that and I can now separate them. And the one that's got the target, pri the priority, the MiG-29, will stay in its position. The other guy will move away. Okay. Uh, okay, let's put them back. Let's see what happens next. Okay, and we've got a missile being fired at us. We know that because we've got the missile wa launch warning, which you heard there, and this guy's circle is now flashing. So the SA-6 is now priority because it's firing at us. Let's check it's got it right, and it has. You can see that is a missile coming right at our face. So let's just stay on task just a little bit longer before we turn away. And you can see the missile there. Out it comes. Holy cow. So at this point, we have to take evasion. We can see it's still got a track on us. It's still firing at us. We've still got a flashing circle. Next, we're going to go to a basic evasion. Burners on, and we're going to turn away from this mother. And we've got both guys firing at us now, I think. I think we've got the uh, MiG-29 firing at us as well. Uh, yes, we've got a MiG-29 missile coming at us. It's actually a, yeah, it's a flanker, but... And that's what I wanted to show. Uh, we're now turned, we're now essentially beaming the target, flying a beam, i.e. flying sidewards to the, to the targets. And you see the disappeared off the RWR. That is because they are essentially against our belly now. You can see that, that um, those, both those missiles in the distance are against our belly. And remember what I talked about, there's a dead spot on the belly and a dead spot um, on the uh, on the roof essentially as well um, now don't be fooled into thinking you've beaten those missiles you haven't they're just in the dead spot of the RWR that's a uh, thing people a uh, problem a mistake people often make is think oh I've beaten that missile I'm going to turn back in and then they die uh, regards to missile evasion I'm going to do a whole it's a massive subject and I'm going to do a whole series about that soon so don't worry about that for the time being uh, but let's, let me just get the turn completed I just want to show oh the ship's firing at us as well everyone's firing at us now they don't like us the only thing to point out now is that the only other thing to point out is that um, now I'm facing away and the, the radar sources are now can be picked up by my uh, ring of radar detection you can see they are back the U's back the 29's back and the SA6 is back and um, and they're all firing at us basically um, and the MiG-29 still considers the threat that's all I've really got to say about that, so go and use that. The only other thing is to say you can use it for offence as well, but we'll talk about that in another video. We'll try and keep things specific to defence at the moment.